Sunday, we started on what I titled, How to Develop and Engage the Spirit Eyes. Now, when it, it comes to the physical eyes, naturally there is a difference in what we see. In other words, if I tell you to describe me by virtue of what you see of me, what you will say might be different or will be different from what another fellow might actually say. Amen. Amen. Some people don't actually see well. Now, when it comes to seeing in the mind, it is the quality of the kind of mind we carry that will determine what we can reason. And in the same dimension, what you see in the spirit is a function of the state of your spirit. The state of your spirit. So one thing I will advise every one of us is that please develop your spirit self. I grew up in the village. And I can tell what people do. While we were in secondary school, even in the primary school, to succeed academically, I don't know where he is now because I doubt if I have seen him since we parted ways either in class one or class two. That should be around 1982 or 83. Dauda from Ilori. Very retarded academically. We left primary school together. Or was it? No. I think I left primary school a year ahead of him. But in his own confession, when it comes to me to teach him some mathematics, he said there's what they call hontu, and then they will write it on their pillar, and they will wash it for him to drink so as to be brilliant. That is how far people can go. I can also tell, as a kid growing up in the village, that there is what is called Oguinsoyi. As a kid, that when you take it, whatsoever you read, whatsoever that you are taught, you easily remember. Is anybody listening to me? Yes, now, in business, when you go to places that they say, and that is why I really eat out. Some people may hide theirs, but in some cases, they even display it openly. You will see something in a small pot, hung or hanging somewhere within the premises. I once moved to a house. The previous, the immediate previous occupier was a medical doctor, so he used the place as hospital. So when we moved in, I don't know what to call it now. Those things that they used to do back in days with wood around the house where they will where they, they will hang frames. All right? I don't know what they call it. Faceboard. All right? I don't know what it's called. But mommy said Facebook. Now, when we were painting, we saw different calabashes of different sizes. Somebody shout hallelujah. We saw different calabashes of different sizes. What does that tell you? That is to tell you the spirit or what the man believes in. And so, as a matter of fact, we try to break those calabashes, set it on fire. I can recall that one of them refused to burn. Even when I poured kerosene. 
I went inside, brought out anointing oil, poured it, began to blow on, went to call the landlord. Come and see what I found. I set it on fire again. And then, I got it burned. Now listen to me. Why did I say this? You don't go to Afars. You don't go to Herbalist. I also grew up in a community where white government was the dominant religion, the dominant church. Because Moses Orimolade Tonlache was from that community. Dominant. Dominant. I can say as at the time I was in the village, largely in our community, people in white government, I can say boldly that they constitute about 60 to 70 percent. The apostolic church that we had, how many people convert there? The African church that we had, how many people convert there? The Anglican church, how many people convert there? I knew when they started CAC. Yes, quite a number of them also were Muslims. I know that these people in the white government, they do what they call Eto. And they call strange names. Now, why have I said all this? You don't want to go to a white government prophet. You don't want to go to Alpha. You don't want to go to Herbalist. You don't want to go to even pastors. Because pastors likely are fake. Those that call themselves prophets likely are fake in the majority. Then you have only one option. And this one only option is to develop your spirit self. So that you hear in the spirit. So that you see in the spirit. So that you are led in the spirit. So that you operate in the spirit. For that is what you need. Now, in 2008, in America, I was at a conference. When the people from the Church of Scientology came to distribute their papers, as a matter of fact, by my bed right now, I just saw the book, very big book like that, and I said to myself, ah, I've held this book since 2008. What did they write there? I like to seek knowledge, to know. So I don't say what I don't know. If I'm talking about CNS now, I'll be talking from the uh, 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 viewpoint of what I know. You can't, you can't, you can't argue it. I know that I'm talking about Seleo, I'm talking about Anglican, I'm talking about religion generally. I will be talking about what I know. I'm talking about Jehovah's Witness, I will be telling you because I've read their Bible. I have a copy on my table. I read. All right? I have a copy on my phone. I read. Okay? Now, I'll be talking from the essence of their literatures that I've read. So, I'm reading that book. Now, I want to know what they understand. I want to know largely what they do. Am I interested in becoming um, them? No. Somebody shout, hallelujah. So, you do not have choice. See, if you want to be a Christian, be a Christian. If you don't want to be a Christian, that's your problem. You can be whatever you want to be. But if you must succeed, because listen, if you call yourself a Christian and you do not develop your spirit self, you can't succeed. You will be seeing others succeeding. Lord, why? What is leading you? How to develop spirit eyes. We started it last week. I told you number one. To be genuinely born again. Now, I make bold to say that, I'm sorry, in this our church, only few people that are genuinely born again. You will see in their attitude. Being born again is not just not wearing a ring. Being born again is not just covering your hair. You can be covering your hair and you are your head and you are a witch. Being born again is not to palm your hair. Again, it's not wearing stylish dresses. 
As a matter of fact, witches are the ones that they don't dress well. Have you seen a beautiful a, a, a herbalist that lives in a fine apartment? Where do they stay? Very dirty, smelling places. Somebody shout hallelujah. So being born again is not you telling me you are born again. You have to show it. You have to prove it. It comes in your attitude. Being born again is not you coming to tell me I'm not dressing well. And so because of that, you are born again. I'm not born again. No, it will show. That is the first. I'm not going to repeat that. We did that last week. Number two. This is where I want to dwell. And I hope I'm able to complete this now because I really don't want us to continue here. In June, we should look at some other things. Number two, love God. So how do you sh show that you love God? Love other believers. John chapter 21, verse 15. What did Jesus say? John chapter 21, verse 15. Antipathy. He said, after they had breakfast, Jesus said to Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, okay, dele. All right? I don't know how to say that in English. He held him. Mentioning his original name. It was Jesus that named him Peter. He said, Peter. What does that mean? The rock. And... On this rock, I shall build my church and the gate of hell. And somebody says he can pray against this church. The person knows they think. We don't need to pray. If it is established by God, and you now come to say you are praying against it, are you not mad? When you begin to get the consequence, you will think that it is somebody that is attacking you. When you say you are praying or you are acting contrary to a church, it will only work if Jesus has not founded it. Somebody shout hallelujah. No word comes out of your mouth so that you don't sound stupid to people. He said, Peter. He left calling him Peter. He said, Simon. He didn't stop there. He said, son of Jonah. He said, do you bond with love for me more than this? Peter answered, yes, Lord. You know that I have great affection for you. Then he said, take care of my lambs. Amen. You show love. To the lamb. And that is the principle upon which this church is founded. What we distribute here is not a function of what we have. Most of the things we do, sir, are faith projects. Verse 16. Jesus repeated his question the second time. Simon, son of Jonah, do you bond with love for me? Peter answered, yes, my Lord. You know that I have great affection for you. Then take care of my sheep. Number 17. Verse 17. Then Jesus asked him again. The third time. Peter, son of Jonah, do you have great affection for me? Peter was saddened by being asked the third time. And said, my Lord, you know everything. You know that I bond with love for you. Jesus replied, feed my lambs. Number one, you are not feedable until you are a lamb. You get my point now? Who is a lamb? You are obedient? You follow rule? Can you tell a sheep, come, even the dog in our house, we give the dog instruction and the dog does what? The moment you think that you are unruly, you have removed yourself from being a lamb. You are not feedable. I 
As a matter of fact, until you become a lamb, your spirit is dead. Forget about outward appearance or what we say. So check internally. And then number two, is that feed. Take care. When we say this is what we want to do to support people, we are not stupid. We are only following the Bible. We, if we don't follow it, God will punish us. But for somebody to now bank on that and now defraud, that person, is, that person is no longer feedable. That person has removed himself or herself from being a lamb. Get this simple fact right. How do you develop your spirit self, your spirit mind? Love God. And then present yourself as a lamb. Arrogance is never part of spirituality. As a matter of fact, arrogance is a spirit. If you don't kill it, it will kill you. Because we eventually lose favor in the sight of those who love you. And that is why we miss out. That is why we are there as Christians. Feed my lamb. Love everything that has to do with God. Listen, your level of commitment to kingdom activities, to kingdom men, and to kingdom women will show that you love Jesus. The more you express this, the more God opens your eyes to see opportunity. Let me tell you the way things work. Madam, if you need at this level now, let us say 500,000 naira to improve your business and you do not have, somebody shout hallelujah. If I have it with me and I know you need it, if I do not make it available and I have it, I am walking contrary to this scripture. And you know what? God will now stagnate me at that level. Because what he provided, I have not released as a show of love. I cannot progress. So the more I release, the more I get God committed to reveal more opportunity for me to make more so that I can be the solution that other children of God are looking forward to. Get it right. You being a support to others does not mean that you are better than anybody. You are only fulfilling the scriptures and the assignment that God has handed over to you. If you do not do that, God will raise other people to do that. Why is it that Christians don't see? Why is it that God do, do, uh, does not show opportunities? Because the last one you, he showed you, all that you made from it, you spent it all alone. You bought good cars. You built good houses. But others are suffering. You are not bothered about them. It's only a matter of time. Love Jesus. Get these things right. They came to Jesus. They said, when? Because Jesus told them. He said, when I was hungry, you did not give me food. When I was thirsty, you did not give me water to drink. They did not see Jesus. Jesus did not ask them water. Jesus did not ask them for food. Jesus never appeared in person to tell them that he was hungry. They now said to Jesus, when did we see you? Jesus says, he said, in as much as you do not do it for any of these, you have not done it for me. Somebody shout, hallelujah. Whatsoever you release in the name of Jesus, you are not doing it for that fellow, you are doing it for Jesus. So the more of it you release, the more Jesus will show you opportunities. That is how to open your spiritual eyes, to see what others are not seeing.
Number three, living in the spirit. Somebody shout hallelujah. Living in the spirit. Living in the spirit. John chapter 16, verse 12. TPT. There's not much more. There is so much more. I would like to say to you, Jesus was talking here. But it is more than you can grasp at that moment. But when the truth giving spirit comes, he will unveil the reality of every truth within you. He won't speak on his own, but only what he hears from the Father. And he will reveal prophetically to you what is to come. Knowing what is to come will require the spirit eyes. You do not see what will come with your mind to specification. What we come, that is in the, in, the, in, the, in the King James, is that it will show you that which is to come, the future, and the future starts from tomorrow morning. From tomorrow morning. And you know the way life is spent by minutes, by second, by minute, by day, by weeks. By month, by year. Before we say Jack Robinson, I was calculating the other time that it has been like 36 years. Next month, we make it 36 years that I left secondary school. 36. Amen. Amen. So when I see children that are 35 now, to me, they are children. They may be tall. They may be big, they may be, they may even be mothers or fathers, but they are children. Why? As at the time I was in Lennon, they were not born. Not, to, not that they were in primary, primary school. Or that, see, when I was in class five and I was the health prefect, oftentimes when I go to class one, class two, and I'm to supervise them during labor on what to do. I don't take a long key. So what I say, Baba, you there, she share now. So they don't like John, the senior prefect, to come near them. Because John will bring K and floor. Or your work. But me, I say, Baba, you there, she share now. Because I see them as kids. So when I go around there, they are very happy. But that Baba, but that Baba. They see me, they are happy. When I enter into their classroom to go and supervise them to read books, instead of reading books, they will make noise. They will say, hey, but that, but that. <laughs> they were children. Somebody shout, hallelujah. So if you are 35, 36 years, which means you were not even born. As a matter of fact, those that I was calling, uh, boy, oh, that she shared back then, if they see you, they will still call you children. Somebody shout, hallelujah. Life is lived day by day and you do not know. You need the revelation of that which is to come. You cannot get it on the pages of books. You cannot get it in the classroom. You cannot get it by attending any seminar. But where you are seated, the spirit can reveal to you what to do. Therefore, if you want to develop, I told you last week, for example, when a child is born, when a baby is born, who teaches the baby to see? Nobody teaches the baby to see. It be seeing becomes natural with the baby. As a matter of fact, if a baby does not see, that is an abnormal situation. When we were growing up, I think they said old, a day old babies don't see. That they open their eyes, but they don't see. Uh, right? Uh, but these days, <laughs> some of them said, I'm tempted to think that they began to see from the womb. 
Because as soon as the babies are born, you will see they will be rolling their eyes like this. Like this. The gongba eyes. Who taught them that? It is natural with them. Who teaches newborn babies to hear? Who teaches newborn babies to speak? When you give birth to a child that does not cry, they will spank the baby. Somebody shout hallelujah. If you are not seen in the spirit, it means that you are not in the spirit. Being born again is being born of the spirit. Then if you are born of the spirit, it is natural for you to see in the spirit. If you are not seen in the spirit, something is wrong with your salvation experience. You need to revisit the cross. And what does it mean to see in the spirit? Operating by the spirit eyes, you know ahead what will happen. Either by revelation. Either by you dreaming, there must be something that is communicating something to you. That is coming. See, in my own case, I might have any amount in my account. If I'm going to get broke, I will know. There is a pattern of dream that I will have. It is a message. Prayers don't change it. Fasting will not change it. It is a message. So what do I do? Number one, I make up my mind. Number two, I manage the pattern of my expenditure. So instead of me doing this, doing that, I cop it. See, if I make a promise to you and I've not been able to do it, I don't feel offended. Why? God sees my heart. You might be blaming me that I make promises that I've not been able to fulfill. It's neither here nor there. Because the moment, see, and that's why, when God is using you to bless people, turn your eyes, never look for the praise of man. Why? The same set of people that have praised you today that you are the best. When tomorrow comes and things change, the same set of people will call you names. Some of them will be bold enough to abuse you to your face. That is the nature of man. So when, and that should not stop you from doing what you are sent to do anyway. Do it. Turn your back. And when they are now calling your name, that you are Jesus, you are assistant God, you are the Holy Spirit, you are the Alpha and Omega, you are the best, you are the whatever. What do you do? Block your ears. That is the nature of man. And that is why anything you get to hear that has been said against you, discount it. That is the nature of man. Somebody shout hallelujah. If you allow that to enter into you, on which you now build to now stop that and not reach out to other people, you are failed. Because even you yourself, you will not get to where you are going. Go spread truth. There must be a prompting. There must be a force that is directing you. Where you are being directed, you yourself, you don't know. But you are being directed. There must be something you are seeing that others are not seeing. And this is very critical. In you moving to your next phase. How do you achieve that? You live in the spirit. He said, when the spirit comes, he will tell you the truth. He will remind you of everything that Jesus has said. He will show you of things to come. See, I make both to say if you are not seeing things to come, go and revisit your spirit. Something is wrong there. We're talking about a new government now, changing hands tomorrow. What are you seeing about that government? There are ways to see things. When they said, a big pastor was saying, God has not revealed to him that there was going to be election in 2023. Didn't that come here that I said there is going to be election? A friend told me that he wanted Buhari to make these changes and the first time I told him not, it will not happen. The second time he said, it, I said, it will not happen. He said, we should go and talk to prophet. We talked to prophet. We even gave them money. They said, ah, I've done this. I've done that. At the end of the day, nothing happened. There is a way you should know what is to come. If there is not the knowledge of what is to come, What's the difference between you and an unbeliever? Kiniyato. Kiniyato. What's the difference? 
of things to come. Of things to come. Of things to come. Of things to come. Your ability to see far into the future is what can elevate you. It is what we place you above others. It is what we make you operate above and not beneath. To see ahead, you act ahead and you position yourself ahead. So that that future is handed over to you before the future comes. Before the future comes. The proof that the spirit is in you is you seeing and knowing of what is to come. And not just speaking in tongues alone. Somebody shout hallelujah. There are some of us that like to speak in tongues. Let me tell you the truth. If you are speaking in tongues, it's real. And it is not fake. The moment you finish speaking in tongues, there must be an inspiration that will come from within. If you speak in tongues very well, get to your room. One hour at night, wake up. I'm speaking tongues. You are not doing it to show forth skill in the church. Do you know that some people do that? They speak in tongue in the church to show skill. They speak in tongue in public places to show skill. That is not what we are saying. You are in your closet all along with God communicating and you are blowing the tongues. By the time you end up speaking in tongues and an inspiration doesn't come, a revelation doesn't come, I make bold to say that your speaking in tongues is fake. I told you how that I left media and I said I was not doing media again. I started looking as I going to Okiaboni Unube to go and be cutting wood. I, be, I began to relate with villagers, including one in solo guy that you have sent to us. The funny thing is that when I was even living in the village, I was not going to farm. I was not going to because I was always afraid of snake. I have to go and pick one guy that was the chief of those that I know were farmers, farmers when we were in the, in the village. His name is Jaya Bisoye. He was the one that would lead. Back in that, particularly when we were in class four, I would follow him to go and walk through the rivers. He would be going. I never saw, I never knew. Maybe I had developed eye problem. That time, it was Eja Lon Lonye. Eja. It would tell me that this is fish. Me, I would say, I was not seeing. Because you see, the fish will blend with the. But how would this man see? It was Eja Niel. Eja Niel. It would just strike the bam, and blood will come out. It would dip his hand there. It would bring out fish. I never saw anyone. After I fell from being a billionaire and I went to pick that guy and I began to take me through the same route again. At the end, I lost money. How did I return back to media? One night, I was speaking in tongues. My laptop was there. I was just saying, God, because again, I've lost everything. And I began to say, God, there must be a solution. After that, something came. Sit down. I sat down. Put off. Put on that system. I put it on. And that was how I returned back to the media. Because two insurance companies together, if I'm not mistaken, I think they gave me about 2.5 million naira, With which I now return back to the office. If you like that, you cannot go far. Stop looking for somebody to pray for you. The spirit is within. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Number four. Look for spiritual mentorship. See, church is actually a mentorship platform. 
Church is a mentorship platform to tell you what you don't know. Sir, the moment you think that you know, I've said it before, let me repeat it. The moment you feel that you know more than the leader of that setup, if you do not live, you cannot be blessed. You have outgrown that system. Leave. And that's why it is the easiest for me to tell anybody, leave. You know what? I'm sorry to say, when I was in Living Spring, go and tell Pastor Femi Emmanuel that I said that. I was a major contributor. Go spell truth. A major contributor. There was a convention where they said, gathering convention, everybody gathered. Lagos, Ibadan, Portacourt, Abuja, everywhere. They came and they said we should do contribution. And I contributed a certain amount. And what every other people, every other members contributed was not more than 25% of what only me contributed. Where am I going? I left that church. Somebody shout hallelujah. Between the time I left and now, the church has only grown has only expanded. It will take appreciation for the man to even mention me on the pulpit. Of course, when we were starting, and I went to him, he said, this church cannot forget you. He said, lie. There is nobody that the church cannot forget. It was only deceiving me. Amen. Amen. Now, I watched them this December. One of the pastors we were ordained together died sometimes last year. So, at Christmas or December period or end uh, of the year, they were doing awards and they gave him post humorous award. And the son of the pastor was talking. And I was watching life. You know what he said? He said that man that died was a loyal leader. The next thing he said, he said all the pastors that they were ordained together with him all left at a time. May that man refuse to what? What does that mean? They're forgotten us. Somebody shout hallelujah. Leave. It's only a matter of time. You will be forgotten. Amen. 4 Samuel chapter 3 verse 3 to 9. Samuel had God but he did not know how to hear. He went to Eli. He said, Baba, you are calling me. Eti Eli, he does not hear God anymore. But the man that was hearing God did not understand what was happening. He did not know. He needed a mentor. He went again. Eli said, I was not calling. He went again. And then he had the same voice. Somebody shout hallelujah. Show me along, Joe. We like me. <laughs> Boy, yeah. He went the second time. By the time he went the third time, Eli himself knew what was happening to him. Mentor. He now said, When he calls again, this is what you say. Emma will only tell you more He needed somebody to tell him. If he failed, to get such person that would give him such a lead. At that time, it would be Samuel, but he would be missing out in the voice of God. Church is a mentor. Mentorship center. Where you are told what you do not know. Where, where you are told what you know as affirmation that that which you know is the truth. But the moment you feel you are on your own, you are bigger, you are what? Please leave. Somebody shout hallelujah. Then, lastly, we have two clock here. One is showing, the other is showing something. So please. <laughs> hallelujah. 
Somebody shout hallelujah. Anytime you need a direction from the Holy Spirit, please go and break the communion. Communion is not what we eat in the church alone. Communion, anytime you want direction from God, go and break communion. Luke chapter 23 verse 31. All at once. It was talking about two people that were going on the way to Amos. And as they were going, Jesus came. And they didn't know it was Jesus. And then they began to discuss together. And they began to say, Ah, you are a stranger in Israel. You never heard this. You never heard that. They didn't know that it was Jesus. Until in verse, in verse 31. Okay, in verse 30. Jesus now broke the bread. He blessed the bread and he gave them to eat. And at that time, what happened to them? Their eyes and they saw. And it was then they now realized that uh -uh, when he began to talk, something giggled within them. Somebody shout hallelujah. And that is to tell you, when else an angel is visiting you, by the time he appears, or maybe there is a shaking, or something is just different, the aura of the environment will just change. Amen. So, the communion is a table of revelation. It is a table of spiritual eye opener. It was the table they were when Jesus told who? What's the name of the man that betrayed him? Judas. He said, There is one among you that have been moving together for three and a half years old. But it was at the table that he said, There is one of you that will betray me. It is a table of revelation. Anytime you need direction, of the Holy Spirit. Go and break the communion. And ask of God that your eyes be opened. Lastly, I said lastly before. Let me add this one lastly. Always read your Bible. What did I say? Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. Timothy. He said, God has transmitted his very substance into every scripture. God has transmitted. His very substance into every scripture. For it is God breathed Every scripture is God breathed. I don't know which interpretation you are reading. No. But what I have here is different too. It will empower you by its instruction and correction, giving you the strength to take the right direction and lead you deeper into the path of godliness. Then you will be God's servant, fully matured. I'm perfectly prepared to fulfill any assignment that God gives you. Please rise up on your feet. I want you to lift your hands to the heavens. You are not praying. You are only singing one song. Open my eyes, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, 